I'm Benjamin, aka The Terrible Australian, a super podcast, and welcome to my 11th and final uh, myth video review of 2013. Uh, for this one, I'm not going to be re reviewing just two films, I'm going to be reviewing uh, the last three films I saw at the festival, which are the films Prince Avalanche, The Past, and Aim High and Creation. So let's get right into it. First up, Prince Avalanche. In the summer of 1988, two mismatched tentmates, uptight, introspected Alvin, Paul Rudd, and his girlfriend's younger brother, antsy partygoer Lance, Emile Hirsch, get a, a dead-end job repainting lane markers a, down a long, fired, ravaged stretch of country highway. Alone in this enchanting, isolated landscape, where time appears to hold little meaning, this odd couple develop an unlikely but ultimately warm friendship. Um, I really like this movie. Um, this is also the sort of return to his indie roots of the film's director, uh, da the film's writer-director, I should say, uh, David Gro Gordon Green. This is him going back to sort of the indie, the type of it, it, films that he used to m made earlier in his career with... Uh, uh, all the real girls, Undertow, and the one I still haven't seen, but a lot of t people tell me it's pro still his best film, uh, George Washington. Because the last couple of years he's been busy sort of directing a lot of big budget Hollywood comedies like uh, Pineapple Express, Your Highness, and The Sitter. So this is him going back to his indie, indie roots, as I said before. And this, I just, re I thought it was a great film. I really enjoyed it. And also, both Paul Rudd and Emile Hirsch are fantastic in the film. They have a their characters are really uh, interesting and in some ways relatable, and it's so beautifully well written, and it's also very funny as well, and at the same time also quite touching. And David Gordon Green does a terrific job in his direction of the film as well. The film looks fantastic. I mean, if you have a chance to see this film on the big screen, definitely check it out because it looks stunning. Like it's a very stunning looking film. And the sort of this sort of uh, fire ravaged landscape that these two guys are in is just amazing, and it looks, even though it's tragic, but it looks amazing on on the big screen. And we sort of the the relationship between these two characters are really interesting. As, and as the film sort of uh, moves along, we sort of get to know both these men, and over the course of time, the sort of friendship between each other grows, and it's. And I just really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think it's an amazing film, but it's still a, a great one. And, and it's one that I highly suggest everyone to check out. We, and also it has a great soundtrack and also a great score as well. And also Paul Rudd gives one of his best performances to date in this film. He, and he's just fantastic. I just think it's a great film all around. And I really liked it. And that is Prince Avalanche. And if I had to rate this film, I'd definitely give it a 4 out of 5. Definitely check it out if you haven't. It's, I think you'll enjoy it just as much as I did. Now on to my next film, which is The Past. Ashgar Ferrati follows up his breakout success of the Oscar-winning A Separation with another intimate drama that delves unflinchingly into familiar t turmoil. Returning to Paris from... Tehran in order to finalize his divorce with Marie, uh, Berenice Bijot, who won the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival this year. Ahmad Ali Mustafa finds the situation has not become any less complicated in his lengthy absence. Marie's new partner, Tara Rahim, I'm sorry if I'm butchering names, is now living in the house with his own daughter and Marie's teen daughter from an earlier marriage from an earlier marriage disapproves but her simming, seemingly but her simmering anger has deeper roots in unresolved issues from the past at first I thought because Ashgar Ferrati of course he made he wrote and directed A Separation which was a, a really great film that I highly suggest everyone to check out and very much deserving of the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film Best Foreign Language Film sorry a few years ago and it kind of goes back to some familiar territory because it's sort of um, like at first I thought well it's kind of sounds similar to a separation because it it's about a couple who 
a divorce thing, which of course a separation was about. But it kind of has that, but that's where the similarities end because it, other than that, it's a completely different story. And even the filmmaking is quite is different as well because uh, in a separation was a bit more, I guess, hand sort of handheld style, not jittery all over the place handheld style, but sort of done on that sort of filmmaking technique. But in this one, it's much more static and and there's and everything and. Um, I think this is a really good film. I don't think it's a... It's not as good as A Separation. But for what it is, it's still a, a pretty damn good film. And it features uh, some great performances by the cast. And Berenice Bajot is terrific in this film. And de definitely um, was very deserving of the Best Actress Award at Khan this year. But everyone in the cast is good. Um, the actor I mentioned before... Uh, where is he? Uh, Ali... Mustafa. Uh, he's terrific as well. I love the sort of the quiet, subtle performance that he brings. But everyone in the cast is good. Of course, uh, the the actor who plays Berenice Bajot's character's boyfriend, he was great. And also the d Berenice Bajot's character's daughter, who is a really interesting and complex character. And I like the fact that you're, you're not exactly quite sure where this story is going to go because it, the movie kind of goes in directions you don't expect. And it, it is beautifully well written and it also plays against expectations as well and sort of went in directions I, like as I said, I didn't expect. But it's definitely not uh, a separation redux. It's definitely its own story and everything and I just was really engaged by it from beginning to end. Um, the only really few things I can, in terms of negatives, um, I don't think it's as powerful as it could have been. I know a lot of people say oh, it's a very powerful experience. I don't think it was that powerful, but, and also I do think uh, the film is a slow burn, like, and deliberately paced, and and I was kind of, and I will admit, I, there were a, a few moments where I, my ta my patience was a bit, was tested a bit. But um, once you sort of get into the film, but once I got into the film, it didn't bother me after that. But um, yeah, it's just a really good film, and I, I really liked it a lot. And it's one that I, I would suggest everyone to check out as well. I'd recommend it. And... If you've loved uh, A Separation, definitely check this one out as well. Um, but I think the key thing to me, what made this film great, other besides the screenplay and the direction, of course, was just really the performances. Everybody is stellar in this movie. There's so many great performances. But I just want to mention the kids in this film, the young kids in this film, they're also amazing as well. And, and the... Every, it's just a really interesting, very multi-layered and very complex film that definitely surprised me. And and it's one, as I said before, I definitely recommend everyone to check out. So that's the past. And if I do uh, rate this film, it's definitely a four out of five. And it's sort of... Oh, I should mention before I go into my next film that it's an interesting film, like it said, it sort of delves into the past and how it's a film that sort of explores guilt and in some ways and all that. So there's a lot of interesting themes and elements that, that run through this film that I found really engaging as a viewer. Um, so yeah, that's the past and definitely check it out when it uh, hits cinema near you. And now on to my third and final film which is the Aussie documentary Aim High in Creation a revolutionary comedy about the cinematic genius of North Korea's late dear leader Jim sorry Kim Jong Il with ground a ground with a groundbreaking experiment at its heart the making of a film within a film based on the rules of his manifesto the cinema and directing Fearing a gas mine is about to be built right near her home, director Anna Boronsky, I'm sorry if I put you her last name, in a world first, goes to North Korea to meet the masters of propaganda filmmaking, who instruct her on the making of a drama in which heroic 
heroic workers overthrow the evil gas miners executed in the dear leader's profoundly melodramatic style. Back in Sydney, Anna's Western cast followed the North Koreans' instructions, calculating in an uplifting anti-communist plot. Whether their film stops the mine or is a glorious turkey, this MIF premiere funded supported film, Aim High in Creation, forges an astonishing human bond between North Korea's filmmakers and their Western counterparts. Now, upon hearing that uh, synopsis, you can definitely see why I had to see this film. It sounded interesting. Like, when I first heard about it, I thought, wow, this is sounds pretty cool for a documentary, and I had to check it out. And I have to say, it's, it's a, overall, it's a really good film. It's not a perfect film, but it's a really interesting and fascinating one. And also, it's surprisingly hilarious as well. It's definitely one of the funniest films I've seen at the festival this year. And I think, and it, it was just really fascinating to, like we all know about, I kind of already knew that uh, the late Kim Jong-il was sort of a, a big movie buff and, and all that, but, and that in a way he created like his own studio and his uh, mate had made films and all that. But it was interesting sort of the film going into the history of that and also how North Korean filmmakers work and it was just so fascinating to me as a film buff and people and as someone who loves film documentaries about films because we never really get any insight to any of this and the fact that uh, director Anna Bronsky was able to actually go to North Korea and it took her a few years to actually get the clearance to go to go there and actually talk to these filmmakers and talk to them about how they made these films and also the techniques and every their techniques on how they direct and write and their uh, and as well as how they tell a story of like it, yeah it's all propaganda it's all North Korean propaganda and whatnot but it, it was just fascinating to see how the film delves into that and it was even sort of funny how Anna sort of took the, what she learnt from them to make her own propaganda film against this uh, gas company that's, that wants to drill near her home. And it's, it, it, like I said, it's a fascinating documentary and, and I just really enjoyed it. Like it's not a hard hitting documentary, it's sort of a, a sort of a light, fluffy, just really enjoyable film and, and the only way I think it, it could only be done is as something that's fun and comedic rather than something serious um, and it was just really an eye-opening and fascinating experience for me um, like I said I don't think it's perfect though um, when she sort of go when Anna sort of go the director sort of delves into the whole uh, the gas sorry gas mines and all that like she does explore that as well, and as well as the people who were, whose lives were ruined, like farmers whose lives were ruined by these gas mines. We get get to meet them and all that. But I kind of wish she delved into that aspect a, real, a lot more, because especially compared to the North Korean stuff, which is explored pretty well. But I would like to have seen her explore the gas mine stuff a little bit more since it is a central part of the film and I don't and I would like to have seen more of that um, and also there's you know the occasional cringeworthy moment like at, at one point uh, the director accidentally says uh, origato which of course uh, to one of the North Korean filmmakers and, and that was kind of what the hell because you know of course she just spoke to him in Japanese so that was just a bit wrong um, I probably unintentional of course but it, like I said it's just interesting just to see the how Korean films are made and they're made with a very specific purpose which of course is propaganda purposes but how they sort of make the films that's really interesting and I don't know if it had well, this is a premiere. What its world premiere was at MIF. I don't know if it's been picked up for a distribution as of yet, 
But I would suggest that if it does, when it does come out, definitely check it out. It's a really interesting and fascinating film. And if you love films, I mean, documentaries about films, it's definitely worth checking out. And and also be prepared that it's also, like I said, it's really funny as well. Really surprisingly funny. Um, so overall, if I had to give this a rating, it's definitely a three and a half out of five. I think it, it would have been higher if, if it wasn't for some of those flaws. And but overall I had a good time with this film and I think it was a really solid end to the festival for me well um, that's it, that's the end of my myth reviews for 2013, I hope everyone enjoyed my reviews over the past few weeks um, I don't know, I'll probably be doing this again next year for the 2004 myth video reviews so keep a look out then and um, let me know what you think of these videos, if you agree or disagree uh, with, I, with what I had to say about the films, if you've seen the f films as well. And let me know what you think, feedback's appreciative. Of course you can find me at twitter.com slash bejamind, and also you can find my writings at supermarcy.com. Well I hope, I'm, like I said, I hope you all enjoyed them, and, and thanks for everyone for watching, and yeah, I'll see you all later. See you everyone. Bye.